Welcome to Highway 62 in Southern California, a busy highway uh, with all the traffic buzzing by. There's a nice road cut right here, but not a lot of space for me to operate and it would be a little noisy. So forgive me if I move the random road cut party just a little bit up this hillside to look at some of the same rocks there. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, down here in Southern California, checking out the rocks, exploring some of the geology. And yeah, so if you're new to random road cuts, it's just what it says. We stop at a road cut somewhat randomly and piece through together our observations, uh, come up with a, a story that's viable and see what we can learn together. So we're looking down this wash here. This highway heads down towards Palm Springs. And if you go up the hill, it goes up into uh, Morongo Valley. So let's just start looking at some rocks here. Um, so we can see there's some layering in these rocks, black and white stripes. And regionally, I mean, I don't know much about this part of Southern California, so virtually anything could be on the table in terms of rock types. Let's head down this way. I won't get hit by a car here, but I may tumble off the cliff. Great exposures here uh, of the rock that we're looking at. So we can see this banded white and black, almost looks like zebra stripe type texture in the rock. We can also see that the rock here is made out of crystals. So you can actually see hopefully some little shiny spots in the rock. Um, and we can see the layering in it. So knowing it's crystalline and layered, that really uh, confines our choices quite nicely. So we can eliminate a sedimentary rock, which would be layered but would not be made out of crystals. We can eliminate most of the igneous rocks. The intrusive igneous rocks tend to not show layering. The volcanic rocks won't have crystals this large, so we can get rid of the extrusive or volcanic igneous rocks. So that leaves us with metamorphic rocks. And due to the layering we're seeing, where the minerals are aligned uh, in the direction of the layering we see, that would leave us with foliated metamorphic rocks. So it stands to reason we probably are looking at some foliated metamorphic rocks. Um, what we want to look for then is the, either some of the minerals that we see existing in here or possibly uh, other factors that will help us decide what this is. Uh, if you know your metamorphic rocks pretty well, you probably already have a good sense. This banding, this sort of alternating light and dark layering we see is characteristic of a metamorphic rock known as gneiss. So this looks like we have some gneiss. There are pieces of other rocks embedded in the gneiss. You can see a darker chunk right here. And this rock, hard to see that one but there's one at my foot that fell out of some outcrop somewhere so in some of these we see that there's these really nice sparkly minerals in here these are mica crystals and with the mica crystals forming along the foliation or the layering we see this would be a schist now schist and nice are actually pretty common together where you get um you know, high temperature, or what we call high pressure metamorphism. So the temperatures and pressures are high enough to uh, change the rock into either gneiss or schist. There's another good looking gneiss over here. And these rocks then typically form at considerable depths and pressures. So they'll typically form where the pressure and the temperature is high enough to take existing rocks and not completely melt them, but have them recrystallize and become something different. Now looking up here, we can see, this is an interesting little zone here because we're actually seeing chunks of rock. It almost looks like a sedimentary rock in terms of the, the dark particles sprinkled throughout. 
Let's see if we can get up there a little bit higher. This is a tough slope. And then the other trick is getting my shadow out of the, the view here. Okay, that's pretty good there. We can see some of these particles of, looks like mostly schist, um, and then sprinkled into this black and white material. And then we can see some of the banding down here. So in places it looks more, a little bit more granitic or like an intrusive igneous rock. And then because these dark particles are inside of it, these have to be older. These are the chocolate chips in the chocolate chip cookie. They have to be there beforehand. This is what we call principle of inclusions. There's actually a really big one uh, right in front of me here. A little hard to see, but here's the outline of it. And I can't back up much further. Let's go up one more step here where there's some really nice uh, foliation and banding. Oh, these are just beautiful in the night. So this really shows you how pliable these rocks become at these elevated temperatures and pressures. We're not melting the rock, we're just causing the rock to behave more ductily. It's able to deform and flow and bend without breaking due to the elevated temperatures and pressures. Pretty fantastic. Nice little exposure here. So don't know much about the specific rock type or the age of the rock in this case. Sorry, I do know the rock type. I just don't know the age. Um, good chance it's pretty old. Pretty old in California might not be that old, but it could be uh, Precambrian in age, you know, older than about 540 million years old. Possibly it's Cretaceous in age, since I know that's when a lot of the uh, intrusive uh, magma generating processes were taking place. And then it'd be, you know, anyone's guess as to what caused uh, the metamorphic rocks to form. If we're seeing metamorphism over a large area, it's usually due to uh, convergence of plates at a plate boundary versus like just some discrete magma chamber that's uh, causing the higher temperatures and pressures. So pretty nice. Um, let's see, any specific minerals to identify in here? And the sun's not being super favorable. Sometimes we see in this um, garnet, I've got some black sort of equant minerals in here. Um, these might be hornblende. They don't look like biotite. A lot of the white is quartz. There's a little bit of pink in here that's uh, potassium feldspar. Oh, some of the white's actually also plagioclase feldspar. So we're seeing those typical ones. Uh, and then there's definitely a little bit of mica in here. These little shiny specks of either muscovite or biotite mica. So. Uh, let's go down to one more spot here, and then I'm going to try to get off this steep slope and get back down to where the car is. You can see how there's some of the flow patterns around the individual class that were encapsulated uh, in the metamorphic event. So, I'm metamorphic uh, petrology is probably my weakest suit. So if I'm not providing the level of detail or the insights that you'd like, uh, I apologize. But that's, that's always been my Achilles heel uh, in my geology education. So, all right, let's move back on over. Hopefully this was a nice view. Hopefully you're able to hear above the incessant uh, noise of the highway, the busy highway heading towards rush hour. And there's some really nice samples up here like this, uh, this folded nice spectacular there. Let's go up one more. And maybe we'll just kind of end it right here and I'll get back over there with the camera off. So thanks for joining me. Uh, kind of a quick random road cut. Not a true road cut per se, but um, the best I could do with the crazy highway. Driving up, there was no shoulder, no place to get off the road, um, and the cars were coming fast and furious. So hope 
hopefully that worked okay for you. So thanks for joining me on this episode. Be well. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing with the channel, helping to promote geology education. And until next time, we'll sign off from this random road cut on Highway 62 in Southern California.